All right, what could derail the rally in stocks? Here now is Andres Garcia, CEO of Zoe Financial, zoefin.com. Uh, Andres, this has been a pretty incredible run in the S&P 500, 25.34, record high. Assuming we get good earnings growth starting next week, is there a factor, though, that could offset that? If you look at one of the main drivers, and this is disputable, this is an argument, one of the main drivers has been liquidity. Right, uh, driven by monetary policy here in the U.S., mm. but also abroad right, with the ECB and, and, and the Bank of Japan. So one of the drivers uh, that could oppose that potential strong fundamental picture that you just painted, which I think is true when it comes to earnings, could be that that liquidity starts, in essence, to come down. Mm. Right. So with the Fed raising interest rates, uh, unwinding its balance sheet, potentially next year the ECB starting to... Mm. Uh, to um, to become a little bit more hawkish when it comes to uh, to the monetary policy. I think that is the biggest risk to, to this rally. Well, and there are so many vacancies at the Federal Reserve. There are now reports that former Fed Governor Kevin Warsh could be nominated to replace Janet Yellen. Now, he's been very critical of the Fed's accommodative policy. So wouldn't that be a concern to the markets if he actually moves ahead and maybe becomes Fed chair? Yeah. You know, we were just talking about this a little while ago. The it's important to remember that whatever someone's views are prior to becoming Fed chair have to become a little bit more moderate. Hmm. So even if he's on the hawkish stance compared to maybe where Yellen is, you got to remember Yellen was really dovish coming in. And last time I checked, interest rates are going up and they are going to unwind hmm. the balance sheet. So I'm not as worried, in essence, where are they starting from, which side, because I think when, once you become a chairman, your chairwoman, you have to become much more uh, in the middle. Yeah, because as in that position, you don't want the economy to explode under your watch. Right. Uh, and you have to also uh, create coalitions of other people in, in the Federal Reserve. Uh, so it's not as easy as that person just making all the decisions without getting consensus. So for that reason, they tend to kind of gravitate towards the middle. Is it too late to add to your exposure to U.S. stocks? Because, you know, you can do the buy on the dip strategy, but it's not much of a dip if, you know, it comes with weeks of gains leading up to that dip? I, I think that's a great question. And the way that I would frame it is, what are your goals, right? So if your goals demand 5 6% returns mm -hmm. going forward, in my mind, you have to have some international exposure, right? The, the last seven years, the S&P gave you 14% annualized returns. Is that repeatable over the next seven years? I think it's not as probable as it was the last seven years. And for that reason, you have to look at other asset classes that could deliver higher returns. So for instance, emerging markets, mm. that same seven year period, two and a half percent returns. Mm. Usually it gives you nine or 10, right? So yes, it's a much more volatile asset class, but I think uh, uh, asset classes like emerging markets, even Europe, uh, have a better risk return profile looking over the next seven, 10 years. And that's, that's where I would look for, for more exposure. All right, so search for yield as always. Andres Garcia, thank you as always. Thanks for having me.